What's up guys? <clears throat> Doe here and my sister's a bitch. But anyways, I'm gonna be teaching you guys about blurs. And yeah, uh, I didn't want to do motion tracking because um, it's a school day and I'm not really up for that type of complicated stuff. Oh, uh, and I'm going to cover, first I'm gonna cover motion tracking with the After Effects tracker for 2D objects with no rotation. And then after that, I'll cover Bouju right here. And then I'll bring the Bouju motion track in the center of 4D and then back into After Effects. But let's focus on blurs right now. So um, I want to, I made this really quick just to prove to you about like how Twixter and the warps and the ghosting lines and stuff like that. So um, when you watch this, you won't really notice the ghosting lines and the warp because it kind of blends in with the edge and the kind of warps and the over edit and the flash but if I take all of this off and then I ran preview it now you can see the ghosting or the warps right when it speeds up right here you can see it really easily and it's it's kind of like having two layers and then having this one like freeze frame and then opacity fade out and scale out a little and then just having that repeatedly over and over and over again so <laughs> that's a quick point that I wanted to prove to you is that when you add effects if you have a bad twixer and you add effects to it uh, it's not won't really be too noticeable depending on what effects you use obviously if you add a color correction and that's it then it won't do a difference but if you add the edges stuff edge enhance you can't see it already that kind of blends in you don't really notice it at all and when you add everything else you have no hope for noticing it at all so um but back onto the topic of blurs i'm going to disable everything so we can isolate the blur and get as much out of it as possible so i'm going to take out the twitch i have two blurs on here, but I use three blurs, and I'll teach you about all of them. So, um, the blurs that you can, that I use are radial blur, directional blur, and CC vector blur, and I want to do this really quick because I feel like my sister's going to come into the kitchen any second and completely fuck this tutorial up. So, um, I'll cover these two first, radial and directional. So, what you want to do is you want to find right after he shoots but while he's still in the scope it doesn't matter where and you want to keyframe the radial or directional I'm gonna start off with radial at zero and then you want to go forward until he's out of his scope right here and then depending on how long you're gonna fade it out um, if you're gonna take two seconds to fade it out then I'll put it at 15 and then go forward two seconds and then bring it to zero because it's noticeable over that period of time but if you're gonna make it go over one second ish right here you should probably make this instead of 15 like 30 because it'll be just as noticeable because you're making it more exaggerated now why is this still oh because it's at 15 I need to make it zero okay so because it's more exaggerated, so it'll be just as noticeable as it being 15 and fading out over two seconds. So, um, that's I usually use those two numbers. You it's obviously up to you because I don't control you, but those are the two numbers that I would recommend 15 over two seconds, 30 over one. It's kind of proportional, I guess. And directional blur, I like this one a lot, and I hope you do too. We're going to include the same concept. I'm going to make the blur length go to like 25.5. Then we're going to scale it out over two seconds to zero. And then what I like to do is I like to click Alt click on direction, and then click wiggle, open bracket, 1, 720. Every one second, it will move the direction. 720 degrees not exactly like 720 degrees like 
directly, but it might it will move a total of 720 times or degrees, like maybe back and forth. It doesn't really like you see how it's moving back and then it goes back again. Well, you can't really see that, whatever. But it's not going to just spin twice and then spin back twice and stuff like that. It is going to be random stuff like that. And what I like is because you can notice it. You can notice a, the obvious change in direction and it looks really really cool after you shoot. Um so I like I like incorporating that sometimes it's not the most popular and not a lot of people do it on YouTube. So I would recommend that over radio blur vector blur by far. Lastly, vector blur, and you cannot have this on blurs, or you don't want to put it on, not blurs, um, you cannot have this on your adjustment layer, because when you go up here, here's an example, bring the amount up to 40, you see the edges, they go all whack and stoof, but if you bring the vector blur down to the original clip and bring up the amount, it doesn't really affect the edges as much. You notice I'm at the same thing and you can hardly notice that the edges are a little black. But when would you ever go to 40? It's it none, nonetheless it still looks a lot better on the actual clip instead of the adjustment layer. So same concept, amount to zero, forward frame, bring it up to maybe ten. Now I'm bringing it up to fifteen. And then I'm going to No, maybe it faded out, but is it noticeable? That's the entire point. You want the blur to be noticeable, so depending on if you flash, if you had a flash, it'll probably be a little more noticeable, but I'm gonna just bring the amount to like 30, something crazy, because it's fading out relatively quickly, so you can notice it for a good split second. And yeah. I learned this the about vector blur from Bolt Ratify because he has a tutorial on it too. Um, it's basically what I covered. And also, what I like doing is if you mix all the effects together, it's like I don't know how to explain it, but it's just awesome. So blur length go forward one frame, go to twenty five. I think I had it at. And then go all the way up here, and then bring it back to zero. Same thing with the radial blur. Go over here, same keyframe, and then uh, 15. But if we're going to have the radial blur, that kind of makes the vector blur go away because the vector blur is on the um, layer below it. So you want to bring out the amount to maybe 8. So you can still kind of notice it right here. I think if I bring it back down to 6, it'll be okay. But, there you go. Um, this orgasmic sex in one clip. Just adding a bunch of blurs together in perfect harmony. Um, I really like to do it. So, I might have seen this on Trico's Trash. Might have not, but I'm pretty sure I've done it at least one time. Where I added multiple blurs together. No, I don't think I added three, but I know I added directional and uh, vector. That was my blur tutorial. Um, I'm sorry that I've been pretty inactive. I recorded this last night out of desperation because I completely forgot that I haven't uploaded in a while. And then last night didn't work because of copyright. So, and if you want to know why it was copyright, I was playing a Lil Wayne song in the background and it picked it up. It was really faint. But uh, I'm not going to play any music in the background anymore. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you find it helpful. I hope you learned a little bit more about blurs, and that you use this, because if you don't use it, then this tutorial was for no good. Um, thanks for watching. Leave a rating, feedback. Um, I really enjoy it, and I also think I'm getting a partnership like really soon. I think I already have it. I just don't have a banner yet. But I'm no I'm pretty sure I'm going to get one. So, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.